What's up guys, my name's Rosh and welcome to an episode of Climate Basics. It's been well known for over a hundred years that greenhouse gases absorb heat. But how do they do this? And what does this have to do with it all? If you've ever wanted to find out, this video is for you. The atmosphere is made up of a bunch of different gases, but the two most abundant are oxygen and nitrogen. Together they make up 99% of the air that we breathe, and yet despite their abundance they contribute nothing to the greenhouse effect. Instead it is the trace gases, water vapour, CO2, methane and nitrous oxides which do the heavy lifting for heat absorption. So what do these gases have that oxygen and nitrogen do not? Well, the answer lies in their molecular structure. So let's compare some regular gases with greenhouse gases. In the regular gases column we can put oxygen, nitrogen, argon and helium. As you can see both oxygen and nitrogen are molecules made of two identical atoms while argon and helium exist only as single atoms. In the greenhouse gas column we can put carbon dioxide, water vapour, nitrous oxide, methane and ozone. Once again there are some clear similarities, but what is it that makes greenhouse gases different? Well clearly the type of atom in the molecule doesn't matter. Oxygen and ozone for example are both made of oxygen atoms. But the one thing these greenhouse gases all have in common is that they have at least three atoms, and that's the important part. But why is it important, and how is it related to their greenhouse properties? Well, it all has to do with the way that molecules with three or more atoms vibrate. You see, heat energy is part of the electromagnetic spectrum, which means it travels in waves made of an electric and a magnetic field which oscillate or wiggle back and forth. In order to absorb this energy, a molecule needs to be able to oscillate in the same way, to wiggle in time with the wave, and in order to do that it has to be able to deform asymmetrically. Now there are several ways a molecule can do this, but perhaps the easiest to understand is the bending motion. If you take a molecule made of two identical atoms like oxygen or nitrogen, you can stretch them and compress them, but they will never bend. A gas made of single atoms can't even do that. This means these molecules will always be symmetrical. But when you add a crucial third atom, then the molecule can bend to create asymmetry. Now when it encounters heat energy, it can wiggle back and forth just like an electromagnetic wave, allowing it to absorb that energy. But in order for this to happen, the frequency of the energy, the number of waves per second, has to be just right. Think of it like a child on a swing, you have to push in time with the motion of the swing in order to keep it moving. If you push out of time, the swing will lose energy and eventually come to a stop. Or if you prefer, think of it like a dance. See, I wasn't joking when I said that was relevant. In order for a dance to work, it has to be in time with the music. If the rhythms aren't aligned, it simply won't work. Just try watching this if you don't believe me. It just doesn't work, does it? But if we find music with the right rhythm, like this. Then suddenly it works. And it doesn't particularly matter what kind of music it is, as long as the rhythm is right. But unlike professional dancers, greenhouse gases can't adjust their rhythm to fit the music. The rhythms they dance to are fixed and determined by their molecular structure. This means they will only dance when the music matches their rhythm, or more specifically they will only vibrate when the energy matches their frequency. If the frequency is wrong, the energy will pass straight through the molecule without being absorbed. This is why visible light from the sun passes through greenhouse gases without affecting them. It's the energy equivalent of playing death metal at your nan's birthday party. It just doesn't have the rhythms required to make the molecules want to dance. The heat energy emitted by the earth, on the other hand, is rich in rhythms which make greenhouse gases want to party like it's the end of the pandemic. And just as this break dancer requires a different rhythm from these ballet dancers, different greenhouse gases require different frequencies of heat energy to vibrate. When they encounter this energy, they will absorb it, vibrate a little, and then release it back into the atmosphere. So that's how greenhouse gases work. They're little dancing molecules, able to vibrate at the same frequency as heat energy, and in so doing absorb it. And that's all because their structure allows them to wiggle asymmetrically. 
All gas molecules with three or more atoms are capable of doing this, whether by bending, stretching or rotating asymmetrically. So all gases with three or more atoms are greenhouse gases. So that's it. It's a shorter one than normal, but I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you want to see more of my content, then don't forget to like, comment and smash that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.